Hello everyone. My name is Cersei Denier and I'm with District 52 Toastmasters. And this is a webinar on open house success. Today I'd like to introduce to you some ideas that I could share about having successful open houses. So what makes a great open house? Well, in my opinion, a great open house is memorable. People remember that it happened. They talk about it later. The open house is friendly. The club members that are hosting it introduce themselves to the people who have never been there before, to the guests. It's interesting. The open house is a little different than a regular club meeting, or if it is a regular club meeting, there's some content in it that is something the guests might find helpful. It's informative. A good open house should always include what Toastmasters is about, an introduction about what the program is, and how it can help just about everybody. And a great open house, of course, is well attended. Well attended, now how does this happen? Do you have any ideas? You have to get the word out. What does that mean? That means you tell people. You write about it, you share it on social media. You get the word out everywhere you can, as often as you can, and in any way that you can, so that just about everyone in your area can hear about it. When you're out there doing that, you wanna share the what. The what is, what is this open house all about? What's going to be included? What can I expect? Share the who. Now the who part is, are you going to have a special speaker? Are your regular members going to share? Are you going to be talking with someone of significance from the community? You wanna share the who so people know who's going to be there when they go. You wanna share the why. Why is it important that anyone come and visit your open house? Why is yours special? What is it about your club, your open house, your event that makes it interesting for the community to come? That's the why. Always post the details about the event every time you post. I do mean every time. Let's say you just talk about an open house coming for your club. You want to share either through a link or through details in the post itself where this open house is being held, when it's being held, what time, and who's going to be there. All of those details I just spoke about. Now, where do I suggest that you post? Well, my go-to favorite is Facebook events. Why is that? Well, Facebook events delivers content to everyone in a geographical area about an event that's coming up. Let me show you. This is Facebook's events page. It shows you what's going on in, starting in January, going through the 27th. And then if you want to see more, there's this link that says, see all upcoming events. It also suggests events, events you may like. This is based on your searching, or your friends searching. Not always what you've looked at, but maybe what your friends have looked at. And all of these events are shared with Facebook users all across the community. So you want your event to be shared. I'm gonna show you what our District 52 TLI, Toastmasters Leadership Institute, which is Sunday, or Saturday, January 25th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Glendale Community College. We're calling it the Winter Toastmasters Leadership Institute. Why? Well, it's happening in January and that's when winter is. It's going to be cold and we wanna warm you up with some really good info information. So here's the event and here's the about. When I'm on the about tab, I get to see what the details are for the event, who it's hosted by, and then there's a, there's a post here, more info on the when winter TLI is attached. 
here's about the venue. Here's about more events have it happening in District 52. And then it goes on to see the gallery. But the most important thing is that you get the details right in the event. This is where you get to post what your event is about. It's a wonderful opportunity for free to broadcast your event. Now, when would you post? When do you get an opportunity to post on Facebook? When should you take an opportunity to post on Facebook? Well, let's say your event is going to happen in an evening. Let's say a Saturday evening. I would suggest that you post on the Saturdays leading up to your event. Because when people are doing things on a Saturday, they're going to look for other events in the future that are also happening on Saturday. So they may be looking at your event. Post on the days leading up to that Saturday, every day of the week. Post in the weeks before the event. At least two weeks before you should post a flyer. At least a month before you should post it on social media somewhere and then have it shared by everybody in your club. This is what makes the power of social media happen. Other people sharing your event. So post and post often. Now let's talk about flyers. Flyers are the way that you would share your event through printed media and or share it through email. It's also a way to create a JPEG file that you can share on District 52 Toastmasters so everybody knows in the district when your open house is. And this is important because you might get members who are looking for a new club, looking for an additional club, and they may find you through your open house flyer. Your flyer should match the theme of your open house. So if your open house is about um, Halloween, you'll want the flyer to look like Halloween. If it's about winter, you want it to look like winter. You want the theme of the flyer and the theme of your open house to be identical. If you want to, you can download templates from Toastmasters at this, this link. This link will give you up to four flyers that you can get with um, blank area for you to fill in. Let me show you. These are the new artwork for open house flyers from to Toastmasters International. This is the first one. The open house flyer has a girl at the top, a guy in the middle, and another girl at the bottom. The theme of the flyers is build a better you. You could have your theme be build a better you and use these flyers from Toastmasters with your information in the body right here. When you download these flyers, they are what are called fillable PDF files, and you can fill in your own information. You can put your club name, the location, the date, and time. And that would be great for you as a quick, easy way to do an open house flyer. There is, each of these characters has its own flyer. There's the girl from the bottom, there's the guy, and there's the girl from the top. It's always a before and after picture in these before, then after, before, then after. And if anything resonates with you, go ahead and use one of these for your open house. There's the link again. Now, if you want to create your own flyer from scratch, you want it to be unique. Maybe you want it to be representing your theme. I use postermaker.com. It is an online free service that allows me to create any flyer I want from scratch using some of their artwork or from online resources. Postermaker.com is free. And I have created a video that actually illustrates all the steps to create a, um, an open house flyer for yourself and your or your club. So check it out on the uh, on the web. 
This is the address of the poster maker flyer. So you can write that down and then find it on YouTube. Here are some resources that I enjoy when I'm creating from scratch. For finding different fonts, because the ones that are on Windows are sometimes pretty basic. I use 1001fonts.com. These fonts are great. Let me show you. When you use the fonts, there's a really couple of cool secrets I'd like to show you. One is, if you want fonts that are free to use commercially or personally, you want this price tag icon to be green because then the fonts that come up are usable both personally and for commercial use. You also want to make sure that all the characters that are in your flyer are in this sample heading. So for example, I have open house and three exclamations. The reason I do that is because if I'm going to have an open house with an exclamation and I like one of these fonts, I might find a font that does not have exclamations in its use, like this one. There's no exclamation in that font at all. And then there's some that do. So you never know what that font's going to look like until you write it out with your text and see if it if it's fits. If you find one you like, you click the download button, then it, uh, open it up and install it in Windows. Let me see if I can show you that. I'll find one I don't have already. How about this one? It's called Creata by Glyph Style. I'm going to click the download button. I'm going to put it into my downloads folder, into my fonts folder, and I'm going to save it. Once it's downloaded in this operating system, it shows up over here, somewhere on the bottom. Here is my font file. I double click to open it up. This right here is the file. If I wanted to install it, I right click, click on open, and it will open this window and the install button is right here. And once it's installed, it's inside your program and you can use it. Now, these fonts are not used in Poster Maker, but they are used in other situations. So it's a good thing to know about. The other thing, resources I show you here are Pixabay for stock pictures, public domain pictures for other stock pictures. These are all in the public domain. And of course, the postermaker.com resource. If you have any questions, here's my contact information. I appreciate you listening and watching. Have a successful open house.